good day to everyone uh welcome to another coffee break program today and uh, we are going to discuss about the severity of the delta variant and the reasons behind that today because we know that we are living with covid now and uh, we take lot of precautions and we uh, combat covid with the uh, various methods and uh, the predominant uh, dangerous uh, variant of covid at the moment is the delta variant so today i'm going to discuss with you about the reasons as to why the delta variant is so predominant and so dangerous and so infectious thank you delta variant it's a very big threat to the world and let's see the difference between the delta variant and the original wuhan uh, wild variant and uh, let's consider 10 factors which led to the delta variant to be so prominent all over the world as i explained in my previous lectures the covid-19 genome consists of four main parts the first part is rna polymerase uh, concern uh, portion of the genome and the second part is protease concerned uh, part of the genome and the last part is nucleocapsid formation uh, concerning uh, genome and the third part is the genomic part which is responsible for the spike protein so the main difference between the original wuhan variant and uh, delta variant is about 14 15 16 mutations all over the gene but they are not contributing to its high transmi transmissibility and high infectivity and uh, uh, being dominant in uh, all over the world but all these things are mostly concerning regarding the change of this spike protein genomic pattern so original delta variant which was known as b16172 which was found in india for the first time has a mutation in the spike protein called l452r l478k there are other mutations as well but they are not much uh, contributing to its uh, high virulency in a, in one of my previous lectures i did a mistake and i have to correct that at this time as well and in one of my previous lectures i had mentioned l542r it should be corrected as l452r so what does it mean this is the spike protein this is the receptor binding dominant and uh, s1 and s2 parts as a result of these uh, mutations in the spike protein delta variant dominated the whole world so the first factor which which facilitated by this mutation is when the virus enters into the respiratory system and reaches the type 2 alveolar cell of the lung the ace 2 receptor binding process with the spike protein is very quick in other words it has increased affinity and uh, the binding process is very quick so that more viruses more quickly entered into the body and as a result of that it varies from the wuhan original uh, version and it varies from the uh, alpha variant and other variants all over the world which were prevalent before and the second factor is as i told you in my previous lectures when the spike protein 
get contacted with the ACE2 receptor to facilitate the virus entering into the cell there is a protein called TMPRSS2 in the cell membrane and cleaving that cell membrane is more quicker and more facilitated as a result of this uh, new mutation. So they get attacked to the ACE receptors quickly and also after that the cleaving process is much quicker and quickly enters into the type 2 alveolar cell. So that is the second reason that the Delta variant became so prominent. The third variant, third reason is its R number, the reproductive number. We know the R number for original Wuhan variant is 3 to 5, which is much similar to uh, common cold. 3 to 5, which is not that high. That means when one person get infected with the original Wuhan COVID-19 virus, that person spreads that disease to two persons or five persons between that. But in Delta variant, the R number is nine. That is very high. In other words, the Delta variant, if somebody get infected with Delta variant, that person spreads it to nine persons and it is it is quite similar to the spread of uh, chicken pox so contagious you know chicken pox is very contagious and the r number is nine so if one get chicken pox that person spreads chicken pox to mostly nine persons those nine persons again spread it to another nine persons each Likewise, Delta variant also does the same and the R number is 9. And the fourth factor could be considered an increased viral load. Why? Because of this mutation, more viruses enters into the, enter into the alveolar cells and uh, very quickly they enter due to quick key, chelation uh, chelation uh, keeling process and more viruses are produced and the viral load becomes more and more usually they say that it is thousand times more than the original uh, Wuhan uh, variants viral load so obviously when the viral load is more than thousand the transmissibility increases in uh, very much uh, rate and the fifth reason is when this type of a mutation happens in the spike protein the originally designed antibodies against the covid original spike protein those antibodies get bit mess up with identifying this uh, spike protein of the delta variant and uh, they need more and more antibodies to control the delta variant therefore there is an escape from antibodies or otherwise more antibody concentrations are needed to control the uh, delta variant if it is one for original wuhan one delta variant needs six times than that according to one of the calculations so that is the fifth reason and the sixth reason is vaccination i'm not blaming the vaccination but vaccinated individuals do and non-vaccinated individuals they all transmit delta variant the wuhan covid 19 virus among them vaccinated people do shed more viruses than non-vaccinated people but good thing is vaccinated people shed the virus for a short period but non-vaccinated periods shed the virus for more than that anyhow initial viral shedding of the vaccinated persons 
is more than what the unvaccinated people uh, sheds. So it doesn't matter whether you are vaccinated or not. From transmission point, you transmit the disease uh, whether you are vaccinated or not to the others. That is why we always ask to use the mask and the protective measures. Okay. Uh, the transmissibility is 64 times more than the original variant. 64% Sixty percent, sixty-four percent more than the original variant, and the severity and the more hospital admissions. Because of all these factors, the severity of the disease is high, and the hospital admission is more than two point five percent. To actually, it's two point six five six. 6% uh, than the original variant. So more people admitted to the hospital and it is more transmitted, 64% more transmitted and the viral load is very high, 1000 times and uh, vaccinated people and non-vaccinated people, asymptomatic or symptomatic, they all transmit the disease. Factor 8. Factor 8 is regarded as reduced to vaccine efficacy. Actually, if you go into the vaccine efficacy against Delta variant uh, uh, and analyze the data, you can get a very good uh, explanation about this. I'm just roughly explaining you in a very uh, brief way as to give you the example. So Pfizer-BioNTech, after two doses, 93.7% effective against uh, infection of alpha variant. For hospital admission and death, more, nearly 100% effective against alpha variant. But delta, against delta variant, the efficacy against infection has reduced to 88% and still death and hospital admission is above 90%. So that is also reduced but still above 90% effective against death and hospital admission. But in case of alpha variant it's nearly nearly 100%. So AstraZeneca after two doses the infectivity reduces by 74.5% against alpha variant and against delta variant it is 64% reduction and uh, again the efficacy is low but against death and hospital admission still AstraZeneca helps 90% for delta variant as well but for alpha variant it's nearly nearly 100 percent so moderna after two doses are more effective than the other uh, injections according to the uh, statistics it's above 90 and above these two and against hospital admission even moderna is only effective 96 percent and death, death and hospital admission. Whereas in alpha variant, it was nearly 100%. So vaccine efficacy has been reduced due to this mutation. And that is the eighth factor that I explained the Delta variant is dominant all over. Ninth factor, Delta variant affects younger generation more than the other variants. So more young people are infected and they, they are more active in the society and before they become symptomatic, they spread the disease all over. The tenth factor is due to this high viral load, due to its uh, increased R number, 
more droplets in the air. So in the populated places with a lot of people, you get more density of the droplets in the air and that also affects the uh, domination of Delta variant all over the world. So considering all these 10 factors, Delta variant became dominant all over the world. And uh, symptoms wise, the Delta variant is quite different from the original Wuhan uh, wild variant because in the original Wuhan wild variant we considered fatigue and high fever and uh, cough as the predominant uh, symptoms but when it comes to the Delta variant the predominant symptom has become headache, sore throat and uh, flu-like symptoms and a uh, lot of gastrointestinal symptoms are more common in the Delta variant and also it is more common to have blood clots and more common to have necrotizing uh, areas due to blood clots. So this is one of the special features of this Delta variant infection. And uh, previously that we considered the loss of smell and loss of taste as a uh, main factor but in the Delta variant that is not prominent. On the other hand the Delta variant is notorious for causing hearing defects. Some people get hearing problems due to Delta variant. So these are the differences between Delta variant and its uh, original Wuhan uh, wild variant. Treatment wise there is no big difference. There is no medication still as an antiviral agent that we can use against a Delta variant. The efficacy of monoclonal antibodies is supposed to be less effective against Delta variant. Dexamethasone still prevails uh, and plays a role and all the other methods that we use for uh, severe COVID-19 still we can use. And, uh, but more dangerous due to this uh, uh, more virulency and the prevention again still vaccination has a place as I told you 90% you can stop uh, hospital admission and death and uh, good health care using masks keeping distance washing hands not touching the face by uh, contaminated hands reducing the spread by isolating uh, when you get exposed or when you get infection or the quarantine quarantine measures these are still valid for delta variant as well i hope that in, that you enjoyed the explanation about the severity and infectivity and transmissibility of delta variant and uh, its uh, uh, reasons uh, as to why it is so uh, predominant all over the world at the moment Thank you so much for listening to my Coffee Break program. Uh, let's meet again soon with another educative program. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe it and uh, encourage me to carry on this channel. Thank you so much.